Views expressed by Casters Guild members are only the opinions of that member, and that could change from day to day. Guild members may use mature language, but that in no way means they are mature. Listener discretion is advised. No one is surprised by the Xbox sales numbers, after school anime nostalgia is on the rise, and what shows are being reimagined? Well, that's the spell we're casting tonight on Casters Guild. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Caster's Guild. I am your guild master, Rick Perry, and I do not volunteer as tribute. And I am your guild master, Baron Kane, and yeah, I might, depending on, you know. The bitch, I might. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right out of the gate, I do want to bring some news from one of our guild members. Recently, we had a guest on the podcast and we talked about Dungeons Not Dating and the Kickstarter is now officially live. So you may remember we got a little bit of an exclusive of what was going to be available on the Kickstarter. And if you pledge at least $20 toward the Kickstarter, you are entered to win a castle getaway. I'm in. Heck yeah. Hey, if you've got enough friends that you can get together for 10,000, you can guarantee your castle getaway. And the castle apparently sleeps 20. So 500, 500 bucks a person. Yeah. Get yourself a castle getaway. But either way, it's an awesome app and you should go back to Kickstarter anyway. All right. Moving on straight into some anime news. 90s kids will remember a block of anime called Toonami. Never heard of it. <laughs> Toonami is the reason I know what anime is. It's how I used to watch my Sailor Moon and my Dragon Balls. But Toonami is coming back uh, with the Toonami Rewind block. By the time this episode airs, I think? Yeah. Are they? And they're, uh, they're just playing each episode, like, you know, from the last episode back to the beginning, right? To the first episode. <laughs> you know what? That would be fantastic if that's what they were doing. But that'd no, be, no, that'd be hilarious. Uh, no, not by the time this episode airs, but May 31st, May 31st, they'll be starting Toonami Rewind on Adult Swim. It will include Sailor Moon, two episodes of Dragon Ball Z Kai and Naruto. They are looking at possibly adding some other classics to the block to include Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, Tenchi Moyo, Outlaw Star, Blue Submarine Number no. 6, Trigun, and more. And the will even include some of the original bumps of Tom, the oh. Toonami robot. It's really cool. It's going to be cool to see a whole new generation of uh, angsty, not adults watching these. Of course, they're just going to watch them and be like, oh, these suck. It, it's 100% nostalgia bait. Like, it's definitely oh, yeah. not for the new generation. The new generation, like, if they're watching anime, they're streaming it. They're not tuning into Adult Swim at 5 p.m. to watch two hours of anime. It's 100% nostalgia bait. Yeah. Which, I'm not going to get cable to watch it, but I like that it's happening. Maybe there'll be somewhere I can watch some, at least some of the old bumps of Tom. And then just, you know, stream the rest of the anime on my own. But yeah, there's lots of ways to get your anime now. But if you are looking for that nostalgia fix, it is coming back. Not sure how long it's going to run, how long they're going to be doing this Toonami Rewind. But it starts Friday the 31st. So watch it while you can. In some news coming from one of our guild officers... Reading this from an article on Forbes, it looks like in this past quarter, the PS5 has outsold the Xbox almost five to one. I mean, that's not surprising to me. No, not even a little bit, honestly. I mean, sometimes I even kind of forget that the Xbox even had something out. It's kind of like the console exclusive conversation we were having last episode where different consoles use those consoles exclusives to be system sellers mm -hmm. and technically xbox has none right because everything that is console exclusive to xbox is also available on pc because it's microsoft 
Right. Now, am I mistaken? Did we talk about or did we hear about Microsoft not even doing another Xbox console at some point? That sounds familiar. And it wouldn't surprise me if that happened, especially if they're getting outsold by the PlayStation by that much. Hmm. If Microsoft could just focus on Game Pass and getting Game Pass subscriptions out of PC gamers, and it's not like they don't have enough money coming from places outside of the video game space. And if you are someone like me who grew up on a console and still uses a controller for their PC, even though they could be using keyboard and mouse, Xbox controllers are still the best controllers to use. Yeah, I, I've always been a fan. As soon as Xbox came out with controllers, or Xbox, as soon as Xbox came out with Xbox, <laughs> uh, I was instantly in love with those controllers. I don't think I've ever liked PlayStation controllers. You even liked the Duke, like the original Xbox controller? Yeah. That thing was huge. It was. <laughs> Girthy, some <Meaty>. might say. <laughs> Full of heft killed a guy with it i'd take your word for that i mean obviously <laughs> pretty easy to do you could accidentally drop it off a counter and if someone was under it they're dead yeah i mean you remember zach right oh yeah 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 you wonder why you never seen him lately wandered underneath an xbox controller that's right <laughs> fell off the back of a truck <laughs> but honestly i mean it's the same reason i own a ps5 and don't own the new xbox is because of console exclusives yeah, literally. Yep. But I mean, now that they're, you know, kind of going into the whole, you know, if they're getting rid of console exclusives and it sounds like these gaming companies are the ones that are going to have the power over that. Right. Then I mean, with Final Fantasy stepping away from console exclusives, that's that's setting a huge precedent right there. It is. I don't think we're going to see the end of console exclusives for a while. Because Sony Not, does kind of own yeah. a lot of the developers who make yeah. their console exclusives. Yeah. And let's say Sony doesn't have to pay Square Enix anymore for console exclusives. Mm -hmm. That frees up a lot of money for them to go find other studios and be like, hey, do you need some money to publish your game? Make it exclusive. And I think what we'll see is we'll probably see a couple new eras of console exclusives before it ever finally dies. But... Mm -hmm. Square Enix stepping out of the box is definitely a first step. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it just seems like Xbox, the Xbox division at Microsoft has made a lot of decisions over the past couple of console generations that don't make a whole lot of sense to me if they wanted to continue to be a high-selling high console. And I don't know why they would be surprised that they're getting outsold by the PlayStation at this point. Yeah. I mean, nothing I saw in the article was uh, screaming Xbox was surprised. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of, you know, Xbox fanboys out there that are like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 That was probably the biggest, th one of the biggest things when I worked at GameStop. And this is, of course, a few generations back, console generations back when I worked at GameStop. But people not people, gamer bros would come in. And yeah. if I told them I didn't have an Xbox, if they were like, oh, did you play this? And they're like, no, I don't have an Xbox. I have a PlayStation. They'd berate me for having the worst console. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, whatever. So what <laughs> you're trying to say is you feel a little vindicated at right right about now? No, honestly, no, I, no. Felt, I felt pity for them then. And I feel pity for them now. Like, Mm, you're a better man than me. And honestly, if certain developers are to be believed, the PlayStation, at least back on the three, was harder to develop for than the Xbox anyway. Mm -hmm. Which is why Xbox got the games that it did. I don't know. There's there's a whole lot going on, and I don't want to sit here and pretend to be an expert in, in what makes a console great. Oh, I will. <laughs> I just play video games, man. And I'll I know the PlayStation okay. has the games I want that aren't on the PC. See, in this TED Talk, I will tell you how <laughs> these things are true. I am TED. I'd love to hear that rant from beginning to end. Look, I'll tell you what. If, if I was actually <laughs> feeling up to it, I probably could go on a nice big long rant full of opinion and conjecture. 
and um, <laughs> and probably get us in trouble. But um, yeah, it's honestly we're both kind of in the it, it's just too obvious to even rant about kind of camp, right? But speaking of Xbox, there is the follow up news by the uh, same guild officer about the Xbox 360 store finally closing. Yep, you've got until July 29th to get in there and get some games if for some reason you still <laughs> have a 360 and you're still buying games on their online store. Right, like you are still... I mean, don't get me wrong, I definitely see there being many reasons why there is someone still playing Xbox 360 and sure. still, you know, actively using their store and stuff. And some of it is just, that's what they can afford. I get it. However, and if that's the reason you're doing it, the article we have here from Screen Rant actually has some suggestions for some of the games that are going to be heavily discounted because the store mm -hmm. is ending. And there's some good ones on here. Yeah. Uh, Alone in the Dark at 75% off. Child of Light, excellent game, 80% off. Far Cry 4, love that one, 80% off. Kane and Lynch Dead Men, I've never played that one, heard good things, 85% off. Sniper, Ghost Warrior, 90% off. Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider, 75 and 80% off, respectively. Who doesn't love some Laura Croft? And Watch Dogs, another one I personally never played, but I've heard great things, 80% off. So yeah, no, I am I'm I think that's really cool. And it's not like, you know, once this store closes, you're not going to be able to play your games. You'll, you'll still be able to play your games. And also, you know, the Xbox 360 still takes discs so yeah. you should still be able to get them on the secondhand market so you know not a big deal the not news here that that really surprises me is that a lot of those titles will still be supporting online play even mm -hmm. on the 360 which mm -hmm. i didn't even realize that was still going on let alone that oh. they're still going to push it past the store yeah so get the game now and you can still not only play it, but play it online for quite some time. That's exciting. But if you are looking to, like, get over on Microsoft and be like, oh, I'm going to go buy the digital version of Rise of the Tomb Raider on my 360 and then go play it on my Xbox S because it's the same account, n that doesn't work. They're only discounting the 360 version of the game. I really don't know why, but I thought that for somehow, some reason, some way... You were building that up into a tvillain.com ad. I don't know how you were going to do it. <laughs> but I felt it coming. And I'm like, oh. It's still a bit oh. early. It's still a bit okay. early for the tvillain.com. Right, right. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. But yeah, that would have been a good one if I'd, if I'd have somehow turned that into a, a tvillain ad. Oh, man. But I mean, for them to just even support it this long, I honestly didn't even realize it was still going on. I mean, why would I? I don't have a 360. Mm-hmm. But for them to even support it this long and then to continue to support online pay play, man, I, I got to applaud Microsoft on this one. You know, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that they're making a ton of money on, and yet they're still supporting it. So good for them. Yeah. But as long as we're talking about major console companies and the moves they're making, apparently Nintendo is acquiring the studio that has ported a lot of the games to their console. So anyone who owns a Nintendo Switch, and it might be the only console that they own, might know that you can get a lot of the modern AAA games on that console. They're not extremely impressive. If anything, the only really impressive thing about it is that those games are running on a Switch, even if the games, they aren't running very impressively, just the fact that they're running on the Switch. But Shiver is a studio that brought Mortal Kombat 1 and Hogwarts Legacy to Nintendo Switch. And while they are undoubtedly the worst versions of those games, just the simple fact that you can play them on the Switch, like I said, is pretty impressive. And Nintendo apparently thought so as well, because they went ahead and acquired Shiver. Dang. So we can go ahead and do all the speculating we want, because the only reason I can see for Nintendo to make this move is that they are making moves to make sure that when this new Switch comes out, they're going to continue to get modern AAA titles on the Switch. 
and they recognize talent when they see it. And if they go, well, if you can put these games on the Switch, that means as games continue to come out, you can help us put more games on the Switch. I'm there for it. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not excited about some of the games, but I, um, you know, with a certain Final Fantasy company looking to throw their hat in the Nintendo ring, that's a good sign. But you also have a PC, and if they come out with some high-budget Final Fantasy, you should probably be playing it there and not the Switch. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm, looking, I'm looking out for the Switchies. But yeah, for those of you who, if a Switch is all you got, I mean... I know I'm talking about, you know, it's the worst version, but like it's still playable and it is still the same game. It's not going to look amazing like it does on the newest Sony console or the PC, but you're still going to be able to play the game, which is the important thing, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's true. And it just makes me start to wonder what else Nintendo has up its sleeve for the Switch 2 as they gear up to come out with this next console. I know they're looking at higher resolution, so maybe I should say I'm excited to see what Shiver will be able to do with the new power of the Switch 2. Because if they can put a game like Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch with how underpowered it is, what are they going to be able to do with the new power of this new console, even though it will still be underpowered compared to the other consoles? Right. All right, still in the video game news, I'm not a huge Fortnite guy. Me neither. But we are both big Fallout guys. That's and true. Fallout is going to be one of the next big collaborations with Fortnite. Yeah, they got to do what they got to do, I guess. <laughs> I think this is just... Amazon is doing everything they can to push sure. Fallout. And you know what? Good. Because, you know, you get them out in front of as many eyes as possible we're gonna just get more stuff you know what dare i say it maybe a fallout 5 everybody keeps asking bethesda about fallout 5 and they keep going uh not yet not yet oh are we gonna get oh they keep saying they're gonna finish the new the next elder scrolls first sure okay they're like don't even expect the next fallout until you see the next elder scrolls but they've been working on that one for a while, so I can see why they'd want to finish that project instead of just dropping everything and riding the popularity of Fallout and the Fallout TV series. But at the same time, sometimes you just got to strike while the iron's hot, you know what I mean? As long as we get a Fallout 5 before we get a Starfield 2, though, I think I'm fine. I don't know if we're gonna. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, agreed, but <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna. But, I mean, fa uh, Fallout. Fortnite is a free game, and I know that you specifically are into post-apocalyptic media in general. And it's not just a Fallout collaboration. It is a whole season that's based around the post-apocalypse and is going to include other things as well, not just Fallout. I know it's going to have other post-apocalyptic stuff in there. For some reason, I can't find it. But I also know it's also going to have Monster Jam, the Monster Truck Rally guys, and Pirates of the Caribbean are going to be involved as well. So, I don't know. It's free. Maybe I'll download it and give a couple rounds a shot. Who knows? Sure, sure. And with some data mining, they also found that there's going to be some Fallout stuff in uh, Call of Duty as well. Some skins and some executions and stuff like that. That one, I don't care how free they make that game. I will not be diving into Call of Duty to try out Fallout stuff. Nah. But apparently, on the Call of Duty side, Fallout skins are releasing right alongside uh, Gundam and the Crow collaborations as well. The face that you're making right now. I wish our listeners could see. <laughs> Which, oh man, considering everything I've seen with Jared Leto's The Crow. I <laughs> can't help but cringe hard about it being included in any game. Sure. <laughs> no no offense to Mr. Bill Skarsgård, but I'm sure he had no input on what The Crow was going to look like when they first started. No, I suppose not. In fact, I'm going to need him to email me directly <laughs> and tell me that he had nothing to do with the character design of the crow. 
that he that's is right. playing. That's right, Mr. Skarsgård. Casterskill at gmail.com. We'll, we'll be looking to hear from you. I'm going to need that reassurance. All right, so when you're not playing Fortnite and Call of Duty, it looks like Valve is finally releasing another game. Will it be Half-Life 3? No, of course not. They'll never release that game. But it does look like they are working on a Overwatch-esque team shooter. Yeah, what is it with this all of a sudden? Why is everybody releasing Overwatch-esque team shooters? Because Overwatch killed. It was, like, super popular. Okay, but they can't do different art style. I mean, it looks like everybody is doing the same fucking art style. They're all fighting in the same arenas. It, It looks identical. I know it's not. You know, this right. is old man brain kicking in and saying this is all the same thing. But <laughs> I mean, really, though, yeah, the the similarities are uncanny. <laughs> I will say that the valve shooter that's coming out it's called Deadlock, by the way, does look to be leaning more into Overwatch's original inspirations like MOBAs, like League of Legends and Dota 2 where it's actually going to have lanes and like mobs that spawn and things like that, just like they do in MOBAs. Except, you know, it's more of a third-person type deal like Overwatch is. So there are differences, but I do agree with you. I I wish Valve were working on something else. They've always been great at delivering story-led experiences between Half-Life and Portal. Some of the greatest stories told in video games, honestly. And to lean into the hero shooter, which I think that's what they're calling this right now is hero shooters. But to lean into the hero shooter and just that's always been a game type of game that doesn't have much of a story. Or if it does, it's all in the background. You aren't actually playing a story. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like Valve's talents could be better used elsewhere. Yeah. And I think when it comes to Overwatch Killers... Marvel Rivals might have it in the bag. I think that's what Deadlock is going to be competing with, not Overwatch. People are pretty much done with Overwatch, but they are going to have to compete with Marvel Rival- Marvel, Marvel Rivals, and that game looks really fucking good. Eh. But, go, go ahead. <laughs> no, eh, that's all I had. <laughs> eh. I was really trying to think of a good response, but it was just like, I, I just, you know what? There's going to be people out there that really enjoy it, and I'm so happy for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really dug Overwatch when it was newer, before Overwatch 2, and it even got its hook in me for a little while with Overwatch 2. The only thing that could bring me over to Deadlock is if, like, the entire group of people that I play video games with on a regular basis all start playing Deadlock, and then I might consider it. Mm -hmm. But I'm a fight tooth and nail. I'm going to go, hey, guys, why don't we go play Helldivers, or why don't we go play Marvel Rivals, or some other thing, and only if the, every single one of them goes, no, we're all playing Deadlock, then I might go, all right. Okay. But finally, jumping out of video game news and into something a little more analog, it looks like Baron might be getting the Lego set of his dreams. I'm excited to never, ever put it together, but I'm excited. <laughs> Is it the kind of thing you would actually maybe go out and get? Nah. No? I'm not a Lego guy. Well, especially... You know, the more and more stuff I put on my plate, the less and less time I have to do something like put together a giant set of Legos. Which, by the way, we are talking about the Eye of Sauron set. Which looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, leave it to Lego to just take something and make it look so good and still so uniquely Lego. Mm -hmm. I also love these iconic images that were envisioned by, you know, Tolkien, but put to screen by Peter Jackson. Mm-hmm. And it, those those movies have become just as iconic as the books have. And I I will I will say that being a huge fan of the books, liking the books better, you know, thinking that my mind's eye is going to always be better at envisioning these things than, you know, the, the movies. But those movies really are just as iconic as the books are at this point. And this is a huge indication as to, to that fact. Yeah, absolutely. How close now, is this to what I, you envision in your own mind's eye when you read? I think like when I was originally 
when I was originally reading the books and, you know, I was envisioning these towers and stuff like that, you know, I was very much Saruman's tower. That was very much pretty much there in my mind. You know, it was a wizard's tower. It was exactly the way I would have imagined it. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, the tower for the Eye of Sauron was more of a castle, you know. Okay. A fortress, as it were. And it's like, I I didn't really envision that. But at the same time, it's like, I get it. I, I totally get it. I totally get why that would be a fortress, why it'd be a castle look. It's like they really, really put thought into it. Like, you know, why would it just be this freestanding tower? It would be, you know, flowing with lava, you know, huge, dark rock. It's yeah, fortified. It, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it I, I definitely get it. But oh, $459, though. Whew. That's actually, when it comes to, like, Lego sets, I was expecting it to be more. I mean, still, though. Woo. Yes. Yes. Lego sets are very pricey. Now, I don't know if they do or not. But I'm about to find out. The only time you'll catch me getting a Lego set is if it's on some sort of really good sale. If they ever, and they might already, uh, you know what? Do they have a Shire Lego set? Or is these just ideas that people have had? Oh, they do. They have an unexpected journey. Well, an unexpected still, gathering, yeah. I think, is the official name of the set. An unexpected gathering. Yeah, no, I'm. I I would get that. That's what I would get. But it's also tiny and it's probably one hundred and eighty dollars. Well, it is a retired product, so it's whatever more. it's more. It's whatever the secondhand market decide it Son is. Bitch, I give up. Here's here's one up. on Amazon for four hundred ninety one dollars. Nineteen cents. Oh, you know what? I officially don't like Lego. <laughs> Guild decree. We're banning Legos. No. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't be hasty don't be hasty you might have seen my official resignation <laughs> <laughs> all right but i'm banning funko pops then you gotta choose <laughs> no! <laughs> but i think i think one of the coolest things coming out of this set is the set of minifigs that are coming with it absolutely absolutely there's what was that was that mary and pippin that i saw it includes sauron the Mouth of Sauron, oh, an no, orc, that's... Frodo, Sam, Gollum, Gothmog, and more. I guess that is Sam, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, look, he even has the little, uh... I'm not hip on my uh, Tolkien terminologies, but he has the um, the little vial. But if you don't know it, I definitely don't know it. The file of Galadriel. There you go. It really doesn't have a name. It was literally just a vile that... Galadriel gave him. Okay, cool. Wow. But There's if you wanna, to if you wanna look as cool at these minifigs, you know where you could go. I don't. Tvillain.com. How, how did you do it? Tvillain is a t-shirt site where you'll find a killer limited edition shirt being sold for thirteen dollars only while supplies last. Every Monday, the site features a new design by a new artist. We would tell you what's featured right now, but by the time you hear this, it's already changed. They choose the most ingenious designs that reflect everything evil and villainy, as well as works pertaining to anything artistic, pulp style, lowbrow, pop culture, TV, movies, music, video games, comics, etc. All things cool and evil, basically. To check them out and help Casters Guild, click our link in the description. Coming back in, we've got some movie news. It looks like Happy Gilmore 2 has been confirmed. Wow, Adam Sandler needs some money. <laughs> I, okay, maybe. I think this is more Christopher McDonald needs some money. Oh, you think he's... Oh, oh yeah, you're probably right. Yep. Because yeah. he's the one who initially came out and was like, let's do a sequel, and then confirmed the script had been written. And so I wonder if the sequel's about him. Well, it's definitely got going to have Adam Sandler in it. The thing is, Netflix has Adam Sandler by the balls. They made a deal with him that he had to produce X amount of movies for Netflix and kind of paid him up front to produce X amount of movies for Netflix. Which we've... They've definitely been hit or miss. More miss than hit. Honestly, the 
more dramatic ones have been really good, but the attempts at comedy have been quite obviously phoned in and more about Adam Sandler goofing off with his friends, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, if you've got the money to do it, more power to you. Yeah, I, I mean, if I had that money to just make some shit and hang out with my friends, I would, and I probably wouldn't care what people thought. Right, exactly. I think Adam Sandler is living his best life. <laughs> yeah. But if Happy Gilmore 2 is half as good as the original Happy Gilmore. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I'll still enjoy it. Okay, I'm glad that that was your segue. Yes, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you expecting me to rag on Happy Gilmore? No, I thought I thought you were going to be like, if the second Happy Gilmore is going to be as good as the first one, maybe this next Street Fighter movie will be just as good as the first one. <laughs> mm. Oh, man, I uh, I wasn't going to transition over to Street Fighter yet, but that is the thing that's happening. Yep, that is, that is a thing. It cannot be worse. It cannot be worse. The the original was so bad that it was good, but right. you know, that is not lightning in a bottle that you want to try to catch twice. You definitely cannot purposely make a movie so bad that it's good, especially when you're putting it up against the original live action Street Fighter. Mm. It's one of right. those things that has to happen on accident. Yes, I completely agree. But we don't know a whole lot about it. I don't even know if it's supposed to be animated or live action. That's a good question. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out. I mean, I, li I like the story behind Street Fighter, so there's a lot that they could do. And I remember the original anime that they released for Street Fighter. That was great. Yeah, the animated stuff that has come out, the animated movies, and I think there was also a series. Mm -hmm. That was all good. I mean, the live action might have been a real stinker, but the animated stuff is real good. Mm -hmm. But I got I got a little thing that I wanted to talk about and forgot to put it up on the topics to share. OK, so I don't know how many of my my old guys out there remember a little movie called Time Bandits, but it is getting something. I don't know. I I really don't know what it's supposed to be, but I'm expecting it that it's a sequel. A uh, follow-up of some kind? I really hope it's not a remake, but it's going to be a TV series on Apple, and it's being done by Taika Waititi, and I, starring Lisa Kudrow. I first saw Time Bandits based off of your recommendation and went and got it. I rented it from a local video rental place. I got the mm -hmm. DVD, so that tells you how long ago that was. 2007-ish. And I was late to the party then, being that that movie came out in 81. But if I were to pick a director to make a follow-up or a remake of Time Bandits, Taika sure. Waititi would definitely be in my top five. Absolutely. He'd definitely be on the short list. Speaking of short list, though, there is one major thing that this movie is lacking that the original had a full cast of little people there was a the, all the major actors except for one and he was a kid were all little people right and there is not a single representation of little people in this cast that i've seen so far you you know what would be hilarious so all we've gotten out of this series is this this one image just this, yeah just this one right. image so this is the image this is like the opening image of the series which, which, by the way, their outfits look amazing. They look amazing. If <laughs> let's this was just, any other movie, they would look great. But go ahead. Let's let's say that this is the opening image of the series. They're all looking up at something. Lisa Kudrow steps forward, and then all of a sudden, the airship lands and crushes the other five characters, and out steps a full cast of little people. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'd be down for that. I feel like that's something I, I, Taika would do. I'd feel bad for these these actors yes. <laughs> that are yeah. introduced and then <laughs> promptly removed from the movie. But but yeah, I I I just don't not a fan of the direction they're going there. Yeah, 
so far. Like, I need to, I, I feel like even if they were like, I, I'm going to have to look up to see if the original cast is even still alive, because that was a while ago. Now, you know, if, back then, if they were like in their 30s, I'm pretty sure that there's a good chance that they're still alive. But it's like, it, they got to be old men at this point. So it's well, like, let me let me point out a couple things that show up in the Geek Tyrant article here. Okay. First of all, it says that the show reimagines the classic story. Okay. Which means it's not a continuation, it's not a sequel, it's a, a reboot, if you will, a reimagining. Okay. It is a ragtag group of thieves led by Kudro's character Penelope and their newest recruit, an 11 year old history nerd named Kevin. Taika also says that a few familiar faces will pop up throughout the series. Mm. Mean, and yoga. that quote, I loved working with the cast and all the actors we got in. We have repeat actors who change roles throughout the different episodes. They have that. They have that in the film as well. It's kind of the Monty Python thing where people come back and play a different character. I don't know if that means familiar faces as in familiar faces from the movie or that they're just going to keep reusing the same actors. Yeah, I mean, it's still kind of like one of those, okay, that's nice, and even if you brought in all of the original cast to play a character for in this episode or that episode, it's still not good enough. Yeah, I can agree I, with that. That is, a, that is a whole cast that, if they stuck true to the original, then that whole cast could have been handed to little people. And you yeah. can't tell me that there aren't plenty of good little people actors out there you can't tell me that right who are starving for roles at this point yeah yeah even even if peter dinklage stepped aside yeah to clear the way for all the others there are plenty there, yeah it's it, it's it's there there's not there's nothing that they can say that would make sense to me as to why they didn't do it and it doesn't there, even look it, like in this article at least it doesn't it's not even addressed no Nope. They go, just keep talking about time hopping shenanigans. But I mean, I don't know. I, I, You know, honestly, I think what I'm going to do is give them time to release some more stuff. You sure. know what I mean? Let me know what's going on with this. You know, maybe you're right. Maybe they'll crush the entire cast in the first <laughs> episode. But yeah. It, it would be some shit Taika would pull. And that that's the thing that... You can't convince me that Tyka's hands were tied on this. No, especially that, since Jermaine Clement is involved in it as well. Yeah. In case, anybody's, in case anybody's wondering, those two are essentially sol solely responsible for the what we do in Shadows phenomenon going on right now. Right. But you can't tell me that like Tyka came to the studio with this idea of reimagining Time Bandits. And then they went, yeah, you can do it, but you can't have the little people. Right. And that Taika would just be like, okay with that. If there are no little people in it, because like you said, we're going to give it some time to see what happens. But if there aren't, or if it even isn't even the main cast, like if it's just cameos, I feel like that's Taika's fault. That's on Taika. Yeah, 100%. And he's been kind of shooting himself in the foot lately, too with some of the decisions he's been making. So we'll, we'll see how all this goes. Yeah, I can't disagree there with what we do in the shadows and our flag means death. And some of the Thor films, I I've come to expect more out of Taika. And when he doesn't live up to it, mm. I don't know. I mean, like I can't, I can't just leave the bar on the floor. Like I do with so many other things. We have to expect more out of the, the people who we admire when it comes to art. Yep. And honestly, it's like it's like one of those. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to call for everybody to boycott this show or anything like that. No, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not watching it if it's if if it is going in the direction it seems to be going. Right. And if, if my opinion affects how our listeners view this thing, then so be it. That's that's how I choose to use my very, very small platform. No pun, <laughs> no pun intended. As long as we're talking about reimaginings, I don't have a whole lot on this one. It's still pretty new news. Mm -hmm. But it looks like The Monsters is getting another reboot. 
another reboot? Yeah, and they're just calling it 1313. Okay. And here's the, the real funny thing, as far as I'm concerned. It's coming from the producer James Wan, which is the same guy that brought us Insidious and The Conjuring. So, are they, are they going to try to make it actually scary? I think so. I don't like that. According to Geek Tyrant here, it's described as a horror series that plays on the Universal Monsterverse, a.k.a. a darker reimagining of the 1964 classic sitcom The Monsters. Monsters. What? Okay. Look, you know what? I'm just going to say this, too, since we're talking about The Monsters. This is, a, uh, is going to be an unpopular opinion, too. I'm just telling you right now. I may get hate mail. Um... <laughs> Casterskill at, uh, at, at gmail.com. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Um, I did not hate the Rob Zombie rendition of the Monsters. Sure. It was it was stupid. It was cheesy. It <laughs> looked really cheaply filmed. And then there was Rob Zombie's rendition of it. <laughs> I was going to say positive, positive, positive. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's what it's supposed to be. Exactly. So it's just like, Oh, I I don't know why people were so upset about it. Like, what the hell were you expecting? Yeah, the monsters. Like, I mean, the monsters is not the Adams family, right? The monsters is not some high budget horror thing. Mm -hmm. It's a goofy thing they did because Frankenstein's monster is public domain. But yeah, it does really look like they're leaning into the horror because uh, Lindy Lindsay Anderson Beer uh, is going to be the showrunner. And uh, she's the one behind Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're not making this funny. Yeah. They're not going to make this funny at all. Now, now watch, watch them mess everybody's heads up. And they go to do this movie. We all watch it. And it's hilarious. There's not a bit of horror in it at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm so on board for that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. But according to GeekTyrant.com, the entire original series is available on Peacock. So if they do come out and it's just horror and it's not funny at all, you just go back and watch the original. Agreed. With that, email us at casterskill at gmail.com. Tell us what old show or movie you think should be rebooted and not in a terrible way. A way that might actually have something to do with the original instead of changing every part of it. Go into detail. Tell us how you would reboot it. That'd be good. Yeah. You know, if we get enough of those, I will do a whole episode around it. Oh, yeah. And then if we hit the lottery, we may even produce one. So, you know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and you'll get you'll get an EP credit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Come and join us on the Discord. That's where all the fun stuff is happening. And we will see you in the next one. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. bye.